All right, guys, welcome to the shop. Today I'm gonna to be doing a little work on this Faller's Axe wedge banger for my brother. So we got a 28 inch hickory handle with uh, black walnut laminated palm swells. And it's been octagoned. Uh, if I can figure out how to shape this and keep the octagon and have it feel right, uh, then the whole handle is gonna stay octagon. But if I wind up getting to the place where I gotta round this out, and smooth it then it's just a quick step to take away the octagon and uh and go with a regular oval handle so i'll be putting on this is a brand new uh council tools jersey it's their updated pattern so this one's for my brother i'm thinking i'm gonna acid etch his initials right here so we'll see if we have time today first thing i'm gonna do is clean this head up let's get to it so if you're wondering why we're putting a little chamfer or a little bevel right here um, it's basically two things are happening here with uh, with a sharp edge how that was sharp right there that's going to tear up a plastic uh, felling wedge and then two those sharp edges when you pound on something that's where that mushrooming starts coming from and then it can chip off and that's bad but you're reducing the surface space of the pole, focuses the power of the head onto a smaller surface space. Um, so I'm sure that there's a little bit more uh, proper terminology and a little bit more explanation, but I'm gonna clean up the bottom here and uh, might clean up the top a little bit more. So one thing I will say about these, um, and I'm not sure if I showed you on this handle, but we can see these massive grooves right here. Uh, and that was from the tip of the lugs. And I don't know if they pinch this in once it's hung. Um, 
which is what I had thought had happened when it came out. Um, but I don't know if that was from going in or coming out that it made that it made those marks. But with that being said, I took about five minutes with a file on on the tips of these lugs right here. And then I, I've already come through and just slightly flared out uh, the inside. So, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm not going to get crazy on this. Um, and I'll sharpen it once it's done, once it's hung. So I'm going to get to shaping on the shaping on that palm swell. So I have I have done it like this before where I octagon it first and then put the palm swell on and um, And I think this and typically after that I round it I smooth the, the whole handle out um, But I think I think this one's gonna go just like this the the thing that I don't like is that straight line there So I I feel like it should teardrop up, right? Um and they're not, I don't know, there's maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Um, this one's just a little bit higher. But I think I'm going to run it just like that. I'm going to switch to a uh, 120 uh, grit belt and, and fine-tune this thing. I think if I want, I think if it's going to be a straight line across the top and not a teardrop like that, I think I need to actually um, set the palm swell in to the handle a little bit more. Measure it out, cut it real good. Feels good enough. I guess that's what, I guess that's what counts, right?
Well, it looks like I'm gonna looks like I'm gonna have to round the whole the whole palm swell, but there's plenty there to work with it. So I'm just gonna round the whole palm swell out, and we're gonna leave the octagon on up. One day I'll figure it out. I think the handle is done except for the kerf. It turned out all right. I think the rounded palm swell is definitely the way to go. Um, it's not it's not perfectly even but I mean this is a user axe handle so I mean this is going to be bouncing around in the back of a truck or you know it's not doesn't need to be perfect. So next up I think I'll go cut out some vinyl, get some initials ready for it, and uh, we'll do a little electro etching. All right, so we got the the vinyl cut with the initials, and I forgot to weed it out, so it's going to be a pain in the butt to get the cut pieces off of there but I think we'll oh came right off sweet so I cleaned up the top a little bit more uh, with 120 to get some of these scratches out um, and that's that's so that the the solution doesn't seep underneath the vinyl through those cracks and etch something that you don't want etched so,
All right, so I didn't take off the transfer paper, right? Uh, the clear stuff, I didn't take that off. Uh, so no steel was exposed. But worse than that, the little dot inside the P is still stuck to this piece. So I have to pull that off and put that in the middle of that P right there. And then we should be good. All right. All right, we're back in business. All right. So, what I'm gonna do is first sacrificial metal, and then I'm gonna put two blocks down so that I keep the metal just a half inch off of what I'm etching right here. Um, I've never done it this close, I don't know um, I don't know if it's going to be really rough, the texture in there, um, but we're going to see. We're going to see what it looks like. Looks good. All right, so this is, I don't know, about a quarter cup of pink Himalayan salt to one gallon of warm water. We're probably 95, uh, maybe 100 degrees. high probability that I missed something else but we're gonna go with it all right got another 30 minutes let's see not incredibly deep but I think it's deep enough I'm gonna clean this up and then we'll we'll take it apart That looks pretty good. Good enough. I've decided to blue it. Bluing's just so easy and it looks good. Um, and I find myself doing a lot. I don't know how how much it protects, but so that's the Brownells Oxfo Blue Cream Formula. It's the only one I've ever used. And I don't see any reason to to switch it. Um, it works works well for what I'm doing. I'll give you, you know, obviously when you're etching and um, and bluing, you want to make sure that the steel is clean, um, free of any contaminants and. You know, being that this is an axe, it's not really a big deal um, if the bluing isn't really, you know, if there's splotches in it or something. It's it's an axe. It's not a big deal. Um, 
but I will say, uh, you know, clean it up. I'll, a lot of the time I'll just use Dawn dish soap. And then the number one thing to get a good dark uh, bluing on here that I've noticed is warm steel, right? We want it to be warm. Um, and I don't, I don't know, I'm sure the time, how long you have it on there matters. Yeah, see we can, it's coming through a little splotchy. And with that, when you, when you start getting those kind of that rainbow hue to it, a lot of the time I don't like that. But I know my brother probably, uh, he'd probably actually like it. So I'll probably leave it on there if, uh, we'll see what it looks like when it gets wiped, wiped clean. Now, right, if this was a gun, um, I obviously wouldn't be this messy about it. But you already have the the bluing marks from when it was tempered and and everything else. So in a lot of the time I've never I've never blued one of these heads. So um the thing with this is, is that there's so many different conditions of steel. You have the, the forge marks, which is really rough texture. Then it's been ground here, so it's smooth. And then we can see this kind of rainbow coming through from the different temperatures from when they tempered it down to, you know, just this gray. So, you know, obviously, um, a lot going on here. Hmm. That's kind of growing on me just as it is. Yeah. It's a little messy, you know, and it's almost got a copperish tint in spots. And I don't know, I don't know if I want to uh, put another coat on and darken it up a little bit. I think it needs another another go and get that a little rainbow streak out of there. I'm digging it. I think I think that's it right there. I think it needs an edge, and uh, I think we'll mount it on this guy. Yep. It's definitely unique. I'll say that. So, sizing the wedge, this, this step right here, I would have to say, um, aesthetically, is the most important. Um, now, with that being said, you can, you can have an ugly wedge, um, you know, cracks in it, maybe it doesn't fill out all the way up into here. And it's still going to, you know, if it's in there and it's tight, it's going to do its job. But it's one of those things to where, you know, it's going to be there until you put a new handle on it. And if you don't, um, if it doesn't look good, it, that kind of sucks, you know. Yeah, so I always, I always trim the wedge down before you put the handle in it, right? All right, so I got the wedge cut. It's a little bit wider than it needs to be, which is good. And then I like to just take my uh, my little sanding block 
and I just work it down by hand um, to get it to fit. And then you can round out these edges a little bit, right? And that'll, that'll help going in step by step. put an arrow so that I know this side goes forward well it looks the lugs are going to come down to about here and it looks like I might might have an issue so if it's a game of going on and off I'll spare you guys the misery of watching and listening to me cuss. We got a little bit of curl, which is to be expected, and that's actually what I'm looking for. It's actually going on easier than than I was expecting. So I'm just going to cut this curl back and and keep sending it in. We're pretty tight. We've got a good fit. Yeah, we've. We've got a got a nice fit going. It looks like we're getting a little curl right there. Just a slight bit. Round three, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get another eighth of an inch out of it. Alright, so the moment of truth, so I'm going to, I thought about putting glue on this because it is going to see a lot of impact banging wedges, but I think, I think I'll stick with the linseed oil um, because I want the, if I, if I got to pull it out for any reason, then then it'll be easier to pull the wedge out uh, if it's not glued. So, and then this, this linseed oil here is a uh, pure uh, Swedish uh, raw linseed oil. So it's not, doesn't have any of the nasty chemicals like uh, lynching or any of the other fake boiled linseed oils. All right, where's my hammer? 
There's my hammer. The moment of truth. So you only want to get it started with the head pointed up because basically the same thing, you know, inertia, I believe it's inertia, um, when we're hanging a, when we're hanging it upside down, we're pounding it. This is so heavy. It's kind of staying in place and the handles going down. Well, you can do the exact same thing. Even if you have a block that you're pounding on. Um, you know, it, there's still some wiggling going on and you can lift that up and it's minimal because the further the wedge goes in, the more it expands. Um, on the flip side, I have turned them upside down, put it on the block and start hammering, you know, on the top to seat that wedge. And I've actually had the head, I thought it was tight, but I've actually had the head go up further. So... That is one of the benefits is that when you turn it upside down, the head will go up if it's still got room, you know, cause as this expands, um, it's putting pressure to, you know, push it up that way also. So I'm gonna get the chopping block and uh, finish it on the chopping block. Pretty tight. Hopefully I get another half inch out of it. It is not budging. And I don't know that that's deep enough. Yeah, that's not good. Alright, so we can see I'm a little over a half inch from where I want to be. I can't get it in any further. I've already got a crack in uh, in the wedge. Um, I'm going to run it. I'm going to let it, let it do its thing. If need be, I can drill the wedge out um, if it loosens up a whole bunch. I don't expect it to loosen up much. I was just hoping to fill the entire kerf. Um, but sometimes, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So I'm going to run uh, raw linseed oil on it um, for a, a day or two. Probably put three, four, five coats on it. Um, and I'll, I'll probably soak it in boiled. Oh, that's turning out nice. Ah. Uh. Yeah, that's a good contrast. That's a good contrast. Yeah, so I think... Oh, no, I think I'm going to soak this one in... Um, uh, dipropylene glycol. That's what I'm going to do. Soak this sucker. I'm not going to soak, normally I'll soak all through here, I'll turn it upside down, I'll clamp it in a vise and I'll just keep applying oil, let it soak in, and then you know do the same and just keep dripping over a day or two. Oh that's, look at that, initials, that's pretty cool, he's going to like it. Um, yeah I think I'm just going to put it in a, a small container of glycol and just soak it for a couple days i know uh wiseman trading i think they're out of like arkansas or something like that they did a test with 
just about everything you've ever heard of soaking a, a striking tool with. Um, and uh, dipropylene glycol was the winner. But I think he put some water with it, so I guess I'll have to do some looking. All right, I'm going to sharpen this thing up and put an edge on it. All right, guys, there she is. Three and a half pound council tool jersey. So, man, I like that. They put made in, made in USA 2023. That's pretty slick. So, yeah, she turned out all right. And uh, for how much I was pounding on that, I got to get a press. I'm going to build a press. I'm, I'm piecing it together right now, getting everything in a, in a list. But, uh, yeah, super stoked. There she goes. All right, I'll give you guys an update on the glycol, see how all that goes. Um, but really, we're not going to know what exactly it does uh, or how well it works until this thing gets hammered on. Um, I will say that um, I'm going to try to measure. I'm going to try to measure how much goes in, um, and then when I pour it back out, um, We'll see if, if it holds an ounce. That would be cool. That way we'd know. Cool. All right, guys. I'll see you guys next time.